Fist in the Pocket started something new in Italy. The film is, at the same time, incredibly strong and powerful and very, very atrocious. I didn't know when I saw it then, in 65, that the film had this kind of uh, um, uh, disagreeable, uh, sgradevole side. It's a film that uh, resists so well to these 40 years that have passed. So let's imagine Italy in the mid-60s. A year earlier, I came out with uh, a film called Before the Revolution. And when A Fist in the Pocket <laughs> opened, I felt, okay, between this film and my film, we can say that a kind of uh, young, new Italian cinema is born. In Italy, in uh, the early, mid-60s, we were kind of uh, squished by the neorealistic cinema, like Rossellini, The Seeker, Visconti's movies, then there was Antonioni. It didn't happen in Italy what had happened in France, for example, the Nouvelle Vague, the new wave. Marco, he was um, uh, studying at the Centro Sperimentale, the National Film School in Rome. I didn't go to school. I, my school was being on the set of Pasolini with his first film, A Cattone. Anyway, I met socially Marco a few times. We are born in two cities quite close to each other. Parma, I come from Parma, and Marco comes from Piacenza. Um, 50, 60 kilometers. And, and, and yet, uh, these are two very different cities. Parma is a city which has a constant uh, look for elegance, aesthetism, Piacenza is a tough city. Both movies are, in a way, very autobiographical. We have on one side uh, uh, the ideological uh, and sentimental education of a young uh, uh, bourgeois middle class, um, intellectual in before the revolution, and at the end is reabsorbed uh, after his attempt of being revolutionary reabsorbed in his class. Again, Parma before the revolution, the sweetness, the desperate sweetness of life. No sweetness of life in Piacenza. I Pugni in Tasca, Fist in the Pocket, is a very, very aggressive uh, um, story of a little microcosm, a villa in the hills, um, very often uh, surrounded by mist or drizzled, little rain, where this family live, a blind mother, Alessandro, the protagonist of the film, his um, young sister, a brother who is kind of a representation of the conformism of the middle class, not really very sympathetic. And then the youngest brother is um, retarded. So this life uh, which represents really the conformism of a class has to be in some way blown up by Alessandro, who is the protagonist, an extraordinary actor, first time actor, I think, Lou Castell, who reminded me in some moment uh, of the young Marlon Brando because of intensity. It's a kind of a moving bomb, uh, always ready to explode. Fist in the Pocket is not a directly political film, but uh, in a transversal way, it is very, uh, very political. The protest of Alessandro instead of being against the class he belongs to, it's against the family. So he will free the house first from the 
for him, embarrassing figure of his mother, and then from the more embarrassing figure of his retarded brother. Marco, the way he directs the actors and the way he directs uh, Luc Astel, um, in some way I can feel that there is a knowledge of acting uh, which, for example, person I didn't have. And um, I have to recognize that, especially in that moment with these two movies, the uh, actor's direction in um, Fist in the Pocket is probably more complete, more congruous than the one of Before the Revolution. And I think this is also the difference between the style of his cinema and the style of my cinema. Pasolini, who was uh, dividing cinema in uh, two different um, channels, would have called uh, uh, Fist in the Pocket um, cinema in prose. And he would have called uh, Before the Revolution cinema in poetry. The prose of uh, uh, Marco has uh, an extraordinary quality of a realism which is not directly descending from uh, uh, the Italian neorealism, but more from uh, the realism at the end of the 50s and the early 60s in the English cinema. I was completely for the French Nouvelle Vague. Godard, Truffaut. Marco was very much for uh, the English free cinema, like um, Lindsay Anderson. There aren't uh, certain extreme uh, stylistic um, decisions, like uh, making the audience aware that there is a camera, like I did. Marco's style is more on a camera that you don't feel much. Uh, Marco's style is, in a way, less exhibitionistic than my style. A sequence which I liked seeing very much uh, was a sequence where Alessandro is taken by his cynical and uh, mediocre brother to a party. And he feels um, lonely in the party. He doesn't dance. Uh, he doesn't want to drink much. But he feels lonely, but in fact, from his position, he's sitting and looking at the, other, the others who are dancing a very, very um, ludicrous cha-cha-cha of 65, um, we can see that he is detached, that he sees the others and he sees them from a position, which is his POV, of total detachment. Maybe he's thinking of killing all these stupid kids. But Alessandro is a Dostoevsky serial killer in the sense that it's not clear. You really understand that for Marco, Alessandro is like a myth, a mythological character. Maybe in my early movies especially, there is a kind of a, a search for um, virtuosismo. This is a danger that Marco doesn't have at all. Anyway, uh, 40 years later, I've seen Fist in the Pocket again, and uh, I must say, if I don't meet him, I will say him to this occasion, Marco, well done, is a great movie.